Oh, oh no. <laughs> yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another movie reaction and commentary. Today, we got a big one, and I'm excited to finally, finally be getting into this one. This is something that I've been waiting to, you know, actually watch from beginning, middle, and end. I've never touched this film, I've never saw anything from it, but I know it's a big one, and that is A Clockwork Orange by Stanley Kubrick himself. Now, this right here is just. I, I, it's, it's weird. This is a weird one for me because I don't know the impact of this film. Well, actually, I do know the impact of this film, but I don't know why it's so impactful. And I already know that, you know, Stanley Kubrick is a brilliant director in ways that are just, you know, indescribable. You know, his level of just uh, intellectual, just his level of intelligence with the camera and with stories is just mind blowing. And I respect him in that regard to an incredible degree because he's so tactical with his way of you know telling a story and portraying a story um and i'm really excited to kind of finally be going into clockwork orange now by all means i do know this is probably going to be a difficult film stanley kubrick's films tend to be like that um you know but that's nothing new on this channel right like we've tackled difficult films before you know like just look at the one that we did last week the thin red line i consider that to be a difficult film in terms of your level of interpretation and how much uh, I would say the director or the story allows the audience to piece together information. And that's kind of like how I put a difficulty level towards certain films. You guys can let me know if you guys do the same thing or if that's like a good way to rate the difficulty of a film. I usually rate it by level of interpretation and how much information the uh, the director or the film is showcasing to you and how that is done as well too so i do know that this is definitely a difficult film so guys like always i'm gonna try my best to be as interpretable as i can about you know the filmmaking about the story but also provide a genuine reaction as well too i know this is one of those films that just has a lot to unpack so i just want you guys to know that this is my first view I'm probably not going to catch everything. There's probably things that I'm not even going to notice, but I just want y'all to just understand that, be patient, and hopefully I'm able to bring some value into a film that maybe you guys have seen multiple times, maybe you guys only seen once, and bring it into a different light that you guys may have not have seen it in last time. So if I'm able to do that, then I think that's already a thumbs up. Like always, guys, if you want to support this channel, the best way you can do it is through the Patreon. There you can, you know, vote on the movie podcast polls you can have early access full lens you can participate in giveaways that we've been starting up now we just got done our giveaway our very first giveaway on the patreon and uh, instead of one women one winner i decided to do three uh, and they won the first edition of the vagabond uh, manga which is one of my personal favorite mangas that i've read so shout out to all the winners who were able to um win that and shout out to all the people who have participated in that that's really awesome it's really cool to see uh so many people you know get involved in that it's a great way to involve the community and i'm really happy about that again patreon is not the go to and all type of place to kind of just support this channel i get it not everybody can do a patreon and that's perfectly fine you can still support the channel by leaving a like comment and subscribe if you want to share it that's even better i appreciate that too and again i get that not everybody has a sign in account i understand we got some older folks in here that probably don't know how to work youtube like that and hey i love y'all y'all still watching my videos and i appreciate y'all and y'all know who you are i love y'all so much you don't have to do any of those that i just said all that i want y'all to do is just sit back relax maybe you just got in from a hard days of work i just want you to relax get your popcorn and snacks as we hop into a clockwork orange again guys if you want to see and hear everything that i have to say about this film because this is uh probably going to be one of the films that i'm going to talk a lot on and unfortunately not be able to put it on youtube um definitely check out the patreon link below like always That's a way to start the film. <laughs> that is a way to start the film. I love films like this because you really don't know what you're going to be in for. You really don't. It's like you're entering a dimension that you just 
you, you can't look away you know it's it's difficult it's you don't want to look away you know it's hard to watch but you can't stop looking I think there was another film that was either made by David Lynch or Stanley Kubrick that we watch on this channel where it was just balls to the wall, just insane. Like it was as if humanity had no restrictions and the actors were just crazy. I can't think of the name off the top of my head, but the reason why I'm saying is that I love directors that are able to kind of bring us into dimensions and explore how humanity and its themes are portrayed in these worlds that are just slightly different from ours. I think that's a brilliant way to portray a story. Wow, he's saying some really complex things right now. I mean, already this scene is crazy. Oh my goodness. Wow. All right. We're already starting off with the jumping of a homeless man. Man, I haven't seen the movie, but I've seen clips of it. This reminds me of the Warriors right here. Like, damn. <laughs> Oh my god this this violence is so over the top i actually gotta love it especially you got this like this blaring classical music in my ears <laughs> yo these guys don't have anything to do they're just going around and causing so much trouble <laughs> Bro, what? Who? Why are they so violent? Oh my god. This is like so grotesque. Just singing. Bro, so far, uh, this, this, this film is insane. This film is wild. Oh my goodness. Ending endwise. And the shiver is crawling up like slow, melancholy lizards. And then. Bro, his face is crazy. <laughs> If I see anybody staring at me like that, I'm going to probably clock them <laughs> just because. As one usually has under their bed, a giant python, of course. Yes. This guy is a very interesting person. Like, it's such an interesting way to kind of depict to us and showcase to us what's going on in his head while also not telling us why he thinks that way. Have a nice day at the factory. This dude just has a casual life. What? He, he just has a casual life? Is that what you're telling me? Like, he does all this stuff and the parents are just not in the know of it? <laughs> That's insane. That's really wild. She says something about a pain somewhere, hence not at school, yes? A rather <laughs> Why does it keep saying yes? Yes. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> yes. These are some really incredible characters right now. Who wants to save you from yourself? <laughs> I'm gonna just hit him in the in the in the deck, dude. That was that was a that was a wacky scene. That was a wacky scene. I kind of like it. <laughs> the disrespect, bro. What the heck? <laughs> He said, I'm going to F you guys up first before you guys can do that to me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> the, 
the classical music is is so interesting. Like, why why play this? Because I know it's not just an aesthetic. It's probably. I mean, I've been seeing a lot of classical themes in it so far. I'm gonna get in that window and open the front door. Oh my god. <laughs> What what is this universe <laughs> that we are in right now? Damn, they have some crazy objects in this universe. People's houses, you fucking little <laughs> Bro, how did we get here? <laughs> how on earth did we get here, man? How on earth did we get here? We're at the point where dude's holding a giant sculpture of Dick and balls, man, and using it to fight this old lady. What the heck? I never thought I would even say those things. Come on, let's go. The police are coming. On me now, the droogie. <laughs> Damn. Damn. You got busted with a glass full of milk, fam. So my question is, how did how did he become like this? You know, like it begs the question because we didn't see how he became like this. Like, does he is he just like this? Is it society? Is it just like what is it? You know, that's what I'm wondering, because he seems to have a good mom and dad. You know what I'm saying? So maybe it's society. You just come from the hospital. Your victim has died. You try to frighten me, admit so, sir. <laughs> Damn, he can't even rationalize that he killed somebody. It's like, bro, dude, you slammed a two-foot size stone sculpture of someone's phallus on her head, dude. Like, she's dead. <laughs> In behind you, six double high, three to one. Yes, sir. Then your toes belong on the other side of it. Yeah, bro, you're in jail. You don't get any freedom. Like, I, <laughs> like, like, dude, the whole time he was just doing whatever he wanted, and he effed around, got somebody killed, and now he's in jail, and he's like, he can't do any of that now. Yo, bro, dog, that's wild. <laughs> That's wild what they're singing. The whole thing about being controlled and freedom and all of that, you know? Somebody picks up a scrap of newspaper in the workshops. And the newspaper tells all about it. How about putting me in for this new treatment, rather? Whoa. So there's a treatment that can apparently get you out of prison in no time and you won't get back in? What is that? What are they going to do? Like, experiment on them? Like, I don't get that. <laughs> How does that work? Chosen. Hmm. But a man cannot choose. He ceases to be a man. There's a lot of talk about choice here. Like 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 subtly. I am picking up on that. Like like the implication of choice and what that is and what that looks like. And is that a good thing? Because obviously you know, he's done some bad things, but he chose to do it. So, ah, that's a morally gray thing. How many to a cell? Four, just one, sir. Oh, that's a cool ass angle right there. Great use of a wide angle. You can use the lens any way you want to, but I personally feel as though wide angles, which particularly distort the frame, are best um, used when they're at an angle to really go from left to right or right to left and give a very distorted dimensional extension of a frame. So if you really want to exaggerate something, keep that in mind. Be smart with the lenses. I want his record sent to me. This vicious young hoodlum will be transformed out of all recognition. Thank you very much for this chance, sir. I don't think that's... I, I don't think that's going to work out really well. 
I have a scary feeling, especially if it's the government. No offense, government, but you guys are weird, man. <laughs> Believe that you will be able to leave state custody in a little over a fortnight. I suppose that prospect pleases you. Answer the governor, ask you a question. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Yo, this dude has been yelling throughout the entire movie. I love him. Him and the uh, the 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 guy from Full Metal Alchemist should be like best friends. <laughs> I gotta say, I I gotta commend Stanley Kubrick in just being able to just really be himself as a director. I think that's the best thing a director can do is to just create the world that you know is is them, like that's inside them. I mean, the difficulty of doing that is that you know you create your own style, but. I mean, you also run the gambit of not everybody appreciating the style that you create. A lot of people just take a safe bet as a director. But I really do commend directors who create these incredible universes and realities with themes that are still within our own dimension. And they bridge that gap together in the most absurd way possible. And I, I love that. I really do. Morning, Charlie. Good morning, Doctor. Right now, I'm definitely, um, you know what, I'll keep watching before I, you know, state my thoughts on what the theme probably is. ...was strapped to a headrest with, like, wires running away from it. Then they clamped, like, lid locks on the eyes so that I could not shut them, no matter how hard I tried. Oh, they're going to brainwash this dude. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. The thing, the thing is, is like, all right, so my theme that I'm getting from this is what does choice mean? So they're trying to conform a bad person into a good person, but does that mean stripping them of their choice? At least I think that's what this is. I don't know, man. I'm just guessing, but wow, that's terrifying. Did not know this film was going to be here, actually. <laughs> like, how do we get here? Malchik leering and smecking and then going into it I began to feel really sick but I could not wow so they're basically rewiring his brain so when stuff like that happens he's gonna feel ill towards it that's insane man you see when we're healthy we respond to the presence of the hateful with fear and nausea you're becoming healthy that's all Wow, this, yo, this film is crazy, man. Like, yo, that is so interesting. Which makes me think about the title. I'm sorry, guys, that I'm, like, talking, but, like, this film is actually really, like, invoking some interpretation, which I really love. Um... Clockwork Orange, like, just that alone is just a weird title to me, you know? Because, like, it's like taking, like, a like a fruit, something organic, and making it, like, very mechanical, right? I think that's what's happening here. Like, the fruit is just a fruit. Good or bad, it's still organic. But the clockwork comes in when, I guess, humanity is trying to um, reform it. Which is currently what's happening to our main character here. If that's not right, then at least that's a really cool concept that just arose in my head. <laughs> you must take your chance, boy. The choice has been Wow. I just started realizing what was happening because he loves Beethoven. And he's he he since he's hearing it. And he's being reformed. He's now starting to hate the thing that he loves. Wow, man. Well, you must think I'm awfully stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yo, I felt that. Thank you very much. That will do very well. Yo, they really, they really, they... They, they changed him. And it's weird because I don't know how to feel about it. <laughs> I, 
I, it's it's weird. It, it's like, you know, what is freedom? I was going to say, is it individual or is it like society? Interest. The fear of physical pain drove him to that grotesque act. Wow. Okay, all right. So it's nice to know that I'm somewhat along the lines here. He ceases to be a wrongdoer. He this is a very smart film, man. It's crazy as all hell, but this is really... This is very complex. Not very pleased to see you again. And all cured too, eh? <laughs> <laughs> My man is so stressed right now. <laughs> he is so stressed. Can you spare some cotter? Oh, snap. Yo, it's the old man he beat up, bro. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> He's psych. I know you, man. You jumped me <laughs> two years ago out of the park. The old men trying to get at your humble narrator with their feeble rukas. Yo, he's getting jumped by old homeless people, man. Damn, bro. That's that's down bad, man. You do deserve it, though. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh no, <laughs> dude, yo, the, the zoom in, that, I know that wasn't supposed to be comedic, but damn, oh my god, oh, this is his, this is a shitty day for him. God damn, man, damn, that's, yo, dude. That's that sucks, dog. That sucks. I love this shot. I love this shot. This is really good. I love it. I love that it's handheld. I love it shot that is like that it's shot this way. This is this is really awesome. For this young man. Certainly, Frank. Dude, Julian is a freaking caveman. This dude is massive. What the hell? What the hell's going on with this guy? <laughs> what? Yo. I, I love this film. <laughs> like, it's just so entertaining because just people act differently in this world. I, I love it. Sapping techniques of conditioning. Oh, we've seen it all before in other countries. The thin end of the wedge. Before we know where we are, we should have the full apparatus of totality. This dude is just getting used, man. He's just getting passed around by the government, by this dude, by the police. Like, he's just getting passed around for people's, like, uh, uh, true intentions. He's just a guinea pig. He literally has no control. That's crazy. He has absolutely no control now. Wow. And I guess you can kind of ask yourself, what outcome would in this film would you rather have? The beginning or where we're at right now? What is just? I don't know. I can't answer that. <laughs> well started. Hope that's all right, sir. Of course. <laughs> I'm still shook by Julian, dude. That dude is massive. What the fuck? <laughs> Very good brand, sir. <laughs> He's checking to see if there's any poison. <laughs> no, no, my boy. No trouble at all. Here. Let me feel you. <laughs> Yo, Julie, Julian was like, bruh, you're not going anywhere. Dude, he is massive. I can't get over just this guy's outfit. Like, Julian is just this giant. <laughs> oh, man. And I feel that any second, something terrible is going to happen to me. <laughs> well, damn. Damn. Damn, man. That's all I gotta say is damn. Then I realized what it was. They're playing. They're playing Beethoven. 
They're playing. Yo, they locked this dude in a room and are playing the song that's going to make him gag his mind out. Dude, I never would have imagined this being the film that we would be watching. Like, this is crazy. This is a crazy film, bro. This is a crazy film. This is so insane. Wow, he just flung himself out of the window. He just tried to kill himself. Mine is a blank. Uh, the book. And I'll smash your face for you, your blockos. <laughs> well, he's back. <laughs> he's back. He's back. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I have no clue. This film has made me just say no clue. I have no clue. A certain people who wanted to use you for a political ends. They would have been glad to have you dead, for they thought they could then blame it all on the government. Oh my god, he's still a guinea pig. He's still being played, bro. He's still being he's still being played. Like this the same it's the same it's the same hamster on the wheel, man. Helping you, sir. We always help our friends, don't we? Dude. Anybody who smacks like that, who eats with their mouth open, y'all should get slapped in the face. I don't care. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> dude, this is crazy, man. This is just an insane film. Yo, and that is the end of A Clockwork Orange. Oh, my God. All right, everybody, we just got done at Clockwork Orange. This film was a great trip. This was a really great trip. I mean, I, again, I was ready to just embrace whatever that was gonna just kind of come at me, just knowing the director, and I'm very happy that I did. And I gotta say, this blew my expectations even further than I thought. I had no idea that this was going to be like this. If anything, I thought it was gonna be, um, damn, I wish I knew what that other film was. It was it was by David Lynch. It was the guy that, like, he, he kept, like, he hates Heineken. He, I, I, I remember that part. He hates Heineken, and he was just like, always just like, an, he was like a sex addict. It was insane, like, it was absurd, but like, I was ready for that, but for some reason, this film had like another level of complexity when it threw in the whole theme of, you know, choice and what does that mean and control and the loss of control and what does that mean and like freedom, what the heck does that mean and good and bad, how the heck does that look in society? Does society dictate whether it's good and bad or is it the individual? And like, what does that look like when they're reformed? And how is it that they're reformed? And are they truly reformed if it was programmed in them? Or was it like, if you program somebody, are you stripping away their free will? There are so many themes that like are existential and that was so well told through the story and i gotta say this guys you know um a lot of the time especially for when i was in film school there was a lot of moments where people would present um you know their films or you know their projects and they were focused so heavily on a theme you just just the theme of something right instead of focusing on the story which the theme can be catapulted within and for example it's a saying that i say all the time if you want somebody to digest what you're saying, you cannot force feed it to them. This film did not force feed its message to me. It allowed me to get involved and immersed within its uh, within its world. And thus the theme that this story was trying to tell or what it was, I don't know, interpreted or what I was trying to figure out the theme, it, it organically opened up and thus elevating the story and the theme even more. That was excellent. I think A Clockwork Orange is a perfect example to find the absurdity of something and the 
you know, the grounds of which reality is today and just kind of like collide them and figure out what that is. And I think this film did a brilliant job exploring that. Whether it answered it or not, I don't think it's really up to us to, to say, but the fact that it explored it, I think is something to appreciate. And I think that's what really makes a great director. So to kind of leave it off on that note, I hope that you guys enjoyed um, you know, this video. I had a great time just watching this and just like interpreting it. I, I really did. Like always, guys, stay healthy and stay hydrated because we are just getting started. Purple jacket pocket full of weed. Everything that I should ever need. Grab some matches because they give them free. Just like my time. Hair pulled back in the backseat.